Hello and welcome in to Candidate Focus here on your Knoxville Community Media. We are in the middle of a series of conversations that we were having with candidates on the 2023 City of Knoxville primary election ballot. And in case you didn't know, we have city elections coming up very soon. We're right on the eve or the cusp or the edge or whatever word you want to use of uh, City of Knoxville primary elections. We have offices for mayor. We have offices for city council, seats A, B, C, and District 5. And we also have candidates for the city judge or municipal court judge in the city of Knoxville. If you have not registered to vote, please do so. You may go to knoxvotes.org, K-N-O-X-V-O-T-E-S.org, and get all the information that you can possibly consume about voting. But today, we are here with information about one of the candidates for city of Knoxville for re-election city council, the Honorable Lynn Fugit. Thank you. The Peter. Honorable, you like that? Yeah, I like that. Being okay. Honorable. Um, and I must say, early voting begins August 9th. Okay. What else do you want to tell them about that? Well, just early voting it begins August 9th, and uh, you don't have to vote in your assigned precinct. You can vote anywhere in the city um, during early voting, but on election day, you must go to your precinct. Are you an early voting advocate? Yes. Yes. I do it all the time. I had to be, uh, you know, Chris Davis. Yes. The Mississippi Le he finally brought me over, but he had to work on me. Well, I think it's nice to have options. Okay. I, I like options in life. There's a lot of fun and joy to go stand there on election day. Okay. I've done that for years. Okay. But the way the world is now, uh, people um, travel for work more, people are in and around town, and it limits the number of people who can actually go exercise their constitutional right to vote if you only have to do it on one day. So I love what we do here with a couple of weeks of early voting. I know I've been accused of being a get off my lawn guy. I know. Well, no, I, I mean, know, I know. I, I, oh, I love, I, I love yeah. it too. I mean, but convenience is nice. Okay, so there she is, Lynn Fugate. Uh, if you don't know about her, then you're going to learn, and that's what the remainder of this program is all about. So she is a candidate for re-election for city council at large seat. A. Seat A, okay. A is in A, B, and C. So uh, a little bit about yourself, Lynn. You are the uh, uh, a military wife and a military mom, right? Yes, I am. I am um, a military daughter. Okay. So my father was in the Marine Corps. My okay. husband retired after thir as a 30-year um, Navy veteran. He retired as a captain, and my youngest son is a captain in the Army, still outranked by his father. There are two kinds of captains, okay. and we are clear about that in the Navy okay. household, um, but he's over in Germany. Okay, okay. Now, in your, in your course of being a military child, did you travel around the world a lot? Or? No, Daddy was out of the military by the time I came along, okay. so, so no, I didn't travel all over the world. Okay, but with your husband, perhaps, maybe? Uh, not so much him, but I should okay. go see my son. Okay. Where are some places you've been? Oh, well, Italy and Germany mostly. Is that all just... Yeah, well, I mean, that's the two places he's yeah. been stationed. Yeah. So, um, But, you know, my husband s spent the majority of his career as a reserve officer, okay. just like we have our National Guard here okay. in town. And so um, a citizen who also serves in the military is a very high honor. And, okay. and it is two jobs, and I really appreciate what they do because I watched it. You are seeking re-election for city council, but prior to that, you are not a newcomer to politics. You served on the Knox County School Board? Yes, I did for eight years. Okay. as the chair. One, one year as the chair, and one year before that as the vice chair. Okay. And I also was fortunate enough to be appointed to the Tennessee School Board Association Board. Okay. So... My daughter of a teacher, granddaughter of a teacher, so PTA president, the whole thing. Okay. So education is the key to everything. Okay, I believe that. Uh, in your professional life, you were a banker at one time? Yes. In your heart, maybe still? Um, I do miss doing deals okay. sometimes. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I, I was a banker for a very long time. I think it has given me a lot of valuable experience about the way the economy works, the way business works, raise money, pay your bills, all that kind of thing. Um, so 
that was very fascinating. And, and when you do that for a living, you learn a lot about your community and your city mm -hmm. because you're working on projects all mm -hmm. over the community, the city, and the region. So I did that, took a little time off, and ran Nine Counties, One Vision, which many, uh, to you and me, it seems like yesterday, but it was really about 23 years ago that we kicked that off. But many of the fabulous things you see in our community came out of citizen-driven vision, talking about what they wanted Knoxville to look like and our broader region to look like. So I was very proud of that. Went back to banking for a while and then a headhunter called and now I'm at the, C uh, now I'm at the Girl Scouts as the CEO. Talk, talk about that for our audience who may not know. What does that mean, the CEO of, of Girl Scouts? So our Girl Scout Council goes from Virginia down to Georgia, okay. and we have three offices, and the CEO means that you have to make sure that Girl Scouts is available here in this community. I have the staff that helps make that happen. We have three locations, so it is not a small task. And you even brought cookies to one of our Motley Crew lunches, so thank you yes, for that. Yes, I did. Yeah. Yeah. You mentioned that, and if we can bring this picture up, Lynn, uh, you and I both, as well as seven other candidates, there's the picture there, were participated in a forum at the East Knoxville Business and Professional Association, where I was the moderator, and you mentioned uh, during that, it reminded me about Nine Counties, One Vision, and you're right, a lot of the things that we're doing now came about as a result of that. Well, let's talk about that forum. Uh, you participated in many of those as a candidate. So yes. what did you think about the forum? I thought it was great. Um, I enjoy an opportunity to um, talk to folks. I prefer to answer questions than just stand up and give a monologue. Yeah. And so I like that forum because the questions let you know what people are curious about and concerned about. And um, you can touch based on that rather than just tell people about yourself or things. So I really enjoyed it. Did you like my line about, uh, I think it was the only time that uh, uh, you and Amelia had agreed on anything on city council? <laughs> yes, and I told you that was not correct. <laughs> and I knew it wasn't correct when I said it. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, it's interesting. I think one of, the, you, one of the unfortunate things in politics, government, whatever you want to call it, and Fortunately, the city council elections are nonpartisan, which, which helps uh, get things done in the city. But we spend a lot of time focusing on how we disagree rather than on how we agree. Mm -hmm. um, and quite frankly, most votes on city council are 9-0. Mm -hmm. Occasionally 8-1, 7-2, whatever. We very rarely have big divided votes. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's a testament to the fact that um, I really like working with anyone who really wants to work to make Knoxville better. Mm -hmm. You served, uh, are serving a four-year term, so why are you seeking re-election? Is it unfinished business? Do you see some other things out there you like to do, or you just like it so well you want to do it another four years? A little of both. Okay. I mean, I really think that it's important to have well-rounded city council members who understand the wide variety of topics okay. that come before us. Um, and I think my life experience and background really helps with that. But there is unfinished business. So there's always unfinished business with a city because a city that isn't moving forward dies. And so there, we've started working on projects with affordable housing fund. Uh, we've started working on um, programs with that we have a new police chief. We've instituted some new programs with police, the co-responder unit. And last night at city council, we voted to begin to explore an alternative response unit, just adding to all the things that we offer in the city to make Knoxville a better place. That's just part of it. I'm excited about the multi-use stadium that's okay. coming. Um, that That's always an energizing um, thing. It, it impacts quality of life. We hope we need more of our young people to stay here when they uh, finish high school or college and quality of life is a big issue. So I think all those things are important to me and when you serve on city council you get to work on all of them. So uh, you stole my question about did you support the stadium? I think I knew the answer to that already but let's dig into that just a little bit deeper. Uh, you know there were several issues uh, surrounding that and one was uh, you know, salaries and all that kind of thing. I mean, 
Did you embrace it wholeheartedly? Were there any things in particular that you think we could have had a better deal on from a taxpayer perspective? I think in the period of inflation and all the stuff that we've been, we've, we've done a pretty good deal. We, okay. we uh, actually have a team owner who's investing a lot of money themselves. That okay. isn't the case often in other cities where uh, stadiums don't work as well. The state helped fund it. So really, city taxpayers are coming out pretty well on okay. this. I think we'll be I think we'll be fine, and we will attract so much because I think the thing that we have to keep talking about it is not just a baseball stadium, mm -hmm. a stadium that is built for one thing and since it sits empty many more days is not as financially attractive to a city as a multi-use stadium. So we'll have baseball, we'll have soccer, we'll have concerts and other public events. That will generate sales tax revenue that uh, the city of Knoxville uh, benefits from to help pay that off. So, I mean, there's always pros and cons. I mean, you remember back in the day when the convention center came, you know, and there are a lot of people that um, still thought that was a bad idea. And what I would say to you now is whether the stadium itself pay, excuse me, whether the convention itself dollar for dollar worked out it was a draw. We would not have all these conventions, all these people downtown without it, which raises revenue to boost the e economy of the city. There's no doubt about it. How, what is your position, I don't know the answer to this question, oh. about the proposed uh, pedestrian bridge from Neyland Drive to South Knoxville? So, um, that came originally 20 years ago okay. out of Nine Counties, One Vision. Okay. People were really trying to figure out how we reconnect to the river. And there's South Knoxville all the way across the river and we have ways that you can drive across it, but we don't have ways that you could walk, bike, do other safe things to tie in with recreation. So that came out and then it was reinforced in the South Knoxville uh, vision plan. So I think it can be a good thing as everything devils in the details, but so far, the only money that's been committed to the project is from the state of Tennessee for $13 million. So the city of Knoxville doesn't have dollars in it. We, yet. Uh, yet, yet. I mean, we, we will, but, and UT would have to put money into it too. So when you say, what do I think about it? I'm an old banker. I need to see the deal. Okay. And that's why I ask you that question. I trust your judgment on that. Uh, moving on, then we got a short time. I want to oh, allow you a chance to appeal to the voters here and tell them why you're the best person to be reelected to the job. So we spent a lot more than we had expected on the safety center. Yes, but l first of all, um, to th well, there are many layers about that. Um, the safety center is a good thing. Okay. I really think that we're taking care of an area that would have been blighted okay. because St. Mary's left. The city needed better facilities and so it went there and other things will come around it. With my old financial hat on, when you have the highest inflation and the highest prices you've had in a very long time, you're going to blow through any budget. Okay. I got a minute and some change left and I'd like to offer you the, the opportunity to appeal to the voters out there and tell them why they should vote for you. Start early voting. Okay, so um, again, I'm Lynn Fugit and I'm running for city council at large seat A for a second term. I would hope that you would want to um, continue the trajectory of progress and um, forward momentum that we have in the city and I've been a part of that. I also believe that my experience with education, finance, I've been a community volunteer with arts, um, small business lending, all sorts of things give me a perspective that pretty much anything that comes before city council, I have some knowledge of based on my life and work experience. I would close in saying I am committed and Nine have seconds. I, I'm committed and always have been to work with anybody in the city who wants to make things better. Thank you.